Okay, hey everyone, outfit of the day, this is from Gap, from one of my friends. Check it from Amazon, earrings from Forever 21. I'm a flame white swag shirt. Um, I have to be cooking tonight at my co-living house and I just wanted to make this really, really quick video about how I got into crypto. So briefly, 2016, well, no, in middle school was the first time I ever heard about Bitcoin. I remember reading it, reading about it on Yahoo Finance and there was nothing I really could do at that time because I was 12 and I didn't have any money. At all. I like I knew nothing about money, but I remember seeing first reading about Bitcoin when I was in seventh grade, and so that was around 2012. That was around 2012. Then 2017, when the first that I recall crypto bull run happened, um, I bought some Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and thank God for Coinbase for making that so easy and being able to cash in on that bull run. That's really, really, really impressive. Then. Um, if you guys don't already know, I went to a tech coding bootcamp slash programming school in the San Francisco Bay Area from 2017 to 2018. But I definitely had a few people who and my I definitely had a few people in my programming school who were interested in crypto. But at that point, the bull run was over. It was a bear market, and it was just not as interesting to me because I never really understood how important crypto is and the applications that crypto and the blockchain could bring into the world because all I knew was the price was down and I didn't see a lot of investment going into that specific sector. Also at that time in my life I was kind of preoccupied with learning technical skills and learning about tech startups in general. So kind of like drifted from my mind for the for the next few years until I would say I started thinking again about like getting into crypto or reading more about crypto or understanding crypto more around the pandemic, uh, around the pandemic with the stock market initially crashing, wondering where people are gonna be putting their money if they didn't trust the governments to be handling the pandemic well. I think that's when I started thinking about it, but I didn't seriously start researching crypto until about January or December, December, 2020, early January 2021. So I've been in tech, specifically early stage startups for the past three years. I don't know big tech that well. That means Google, Amazon, Facebook. I don't really know too much about those companies or any interviewing for those companies or getting into those companies. Um, beyond that, software engineers get certain levels of like rankings. So my experience is mostly in startups and I know that's not exactly the most popular career path for most people to get into and a lot of people don't even know how to break into startups. A lot of people don't know that you don't even need to learn how to code to work for a startup and be successful in a startup. Um, I have worked in operations, business development, sales, um, go-to market, marketing-esque roles in startups so far. Um, and but how I initially got into startups was I decided not to go to college because I knew I was going to go to college to party and network. Again, I say this is a person who doesn't drink um, or do anything illicit. I just knew like going to college was the network that I was going to have. And I would ch choose to rather go work instead and just figure out my career from there and essentially get, in my mind at the time, a head start. And so I moved to the San Francisco Bay Area to go to this coding boot camp. And at this coding boot camp, there were definitely some people who were into crypto. One of my best friends used to be a crypto miner and he knew a lot, but I don't, I didn't feel like I ever understood how crypto could be important to me personally, just like as an individual level, why that would be interesting to me as someone who wasn't going to transact things um, without the government knowing, as someone who was living in a well-developed first world country, as someone who honestly didn't even understand basic investments or the S&P 500. Like, those were things that were not on top of my mind. So without having that knowledge of finance and banking and like personal finance, there was just like no reason for me to really be interested in crypto. My interest at that point when I was 19, lied more into like social movements and building and startups. Um, and I just never saw that connection for myself at that point. So I've been in startups and tech startups for about three years and one thing I love, and I talked about it when I took talks, like one thing I love about tech startups is that the community is so tiny. Everyone knows everyone. If you ever look at San Francisco on the map, it's like nine square miles. 
and you can walk everywhere. You do not need a car to be in the city. Uh, I take public transit and I walk everywhere and I run into people on the street all the time that I recognize and I know or my friends and friends know or my friends know and it's the tech SFA area culture is really, really unique in the sense that because you never know how successful other people are going to be or what they're working on, like the person you're talking to could be your future employee, your future coworker, your future investor, the person you want to invest in, the person you want a referral from in the future, the person who wants to get a referral from you in the future, um, someone who you want to hire or give a recommendation to your friend's company, like you never know what sort of connections other people have and the potential that they have to be in the future and people are pretty low key. So it's a really interesting environment where people just try to be as helpful as much as possible and everyone is like very conscious of like being their best selves among everyone. Um, so that also makes it really easy to trust people in my opinion because whoever you meet there's already so many connections in place through like, oh, friends of friends or we met at this networking event or like we went on a trip together or yeah, we he, I told him this, he was a client of mine on this, or we worked on this project together, or he jammed over at my house, or we went like to go get ice cream together at one point, and you can meet a random person and you have like six different types of connections in common. Um, and it's great. I really love that. It makes the world feel so tiny and starts to move so fast because the lifestyle of everyone is very high trust and frictionless. So I'm saying all that to like, help you, the viewer, of someone who's not in tech or in startups or in tight-knit industries like politics or like entertainment, um, understand what the tech startup lifestyle is like. So I think also um, during the pandemic, I was at home, I wasn't spending any money and a few of my guy friends were buying property and I started looking into that and I started looking into getting a mortgage and then I had to understand how lending, borrowing, banks work. Uh, I want to obviously get the best rate possible, pay as little interest as possible, and I asked a lot of questions on how everything worked. Now at this point, I've worked for a year and a half-ish full-time. I've been paying taxes, been paying a lot of taxes. I've been um, putting money in two different types of retirement accounts, and put money into savings, um, but basically I'm, I'm very interested in finance. Understanding how banks, private lenders, credit scores, um, interest rates all work together, that primed me perfectly for when one of my friends who used to be a startup founder and then later quit his company because it wasn't a good fit anymore. He's so successful, he's so smart. It was like definitely a smart move to leave at the time that he did. He started posting very publicly, even though he's a very private person. Oh, and I met him playing Mario Kart at a mutual friend's just like kickback. And he was like super, super, super smart and super, super, super helpful. So when he started posting publicly on social media about what's going on in crypto, what's going on in decentralized finance, I thought, hmm, this is really interesting. This is a person who I know is super private about his life and he's choosing to post all of this online. Why is he doing this? This must be huge. So then I messaged him, I stopped his whole social media to understand as much as possible, to be respectful of his time. But then I started messaging him questions and he helped me out, um, gave me just like some basic pointers, put me in a group chat with a few of his friends, and I started making a TikTok channel about crypto. Um, I've already tried making a few different TikTok channels, and a reason I started doing that was because I thought it was extremely, extremely important to learn how to teach people concisely, precisely, in an engaging way. I think it's an extremely valuable skill to be able to save other people time because when someone can explain things to you very quickly, that means you don't waste 10 to 20 hours of your life trying to learn something because there's no good teachers out there. And imagine you not as one student, but thousands of students on a particular topic. Like I think it's like a service to community to be able to not waste your time with BS. I initially like the crypto TikTok channel so that I can hone in on like what I'm learning about crypto since I was like a beginner-ish. and. Also to like build a community of support so that people can correct me if I'm wrong. Since then, I feel like a lot of my focus has not been teaching specifically like decentralized finance, which is what initially I got interested in, but just more about the fact that crypto jobs exist, crypto careers exist, um, the uh, impact of crypto and Web3 in the world for literally every single person, the fact that it protects your savings, you can transact more freely, but yeah, and another another blog that a friend recommended to me in January 
that completely changed my life is called Wall Street Playboys, which is kind of a cheeky name. It's not so much about like philanderers, I think. Like, it's not so much about Playboys, but it was mostly about achieving financial security as early as possible, but in a way that was extremely accessible and fun. Wall Street Playboys definitely gives older bro experience vibes, and it's not something that I see often. Um, one thing I realized, and I've said this in previous videos, is women are taught to save. Women are not taught to make money. And so, like, saving is fine. Reducing waste is amazing. But making money involves creation. And that's something I've always kind of, like, felt missing in any sort of, like, personal finance advice I've received. It's like creation, like what do you specifically as an individual have knowledge about um, that you can bring to the world that provides 10x the value that you get in yourself. And this um, Wall Street Playboys that had this well-aligned life philosophy that I agreed to and they had an amazing section about crypto. And I remember being on a plane ride in January and reading their ebook, one of their ebooks, and by the end of that plane ride I was like, I need to go all in in crypto and learn as much as I can. Um, and once you get like the first shock of like, I need to learn as much as I can about crypto, you're like down that rabbit hole forever. Since then, I've also, I'm currently in the process of doing a crypto fellowship. It's called kernel.community. I heavily encourage everyone and anyone to apply. I think a lot of crypto communities, I felt were very alpha bro-ish type, degenerate. Um, this is super warm, inclusive, and just like idealistic utopian sort, sort of vibe. And through that fellowship, through my already existing startup connections, through my friends of friends, like once you say you're interested in something, people just automatically refer their friends to you or intro their friends to you and you just like hit it off and connect. Through the co-living house I'm a part of where there's also people who are interested in crypto, like I'm gonna be doing a mining series with someone in a different house. It's just like the people that I'm surrounded by and the lifestyle that I live makes it super, super, super easy for me to stick with learning more about crypto and staying in the industry. There are a lot of crypto roles, just like startups, about operations, around incentives and strategy, around growth, around marketing, around community. It's not just like coding and being super technical, although a lot of the discourse is technical, it's because all of these crypto people, some of them are very diehard. But one thing I've realized is like, it's really surprising how some people have been involved in crypto for years, have organized so many different types of communities, and they, to me, don't know some really basic entry level stuff because it's new. And I'm not gonna say nobody knows what they're doing, but everyone is definitely figuring it out as they go. And so people who are experienced in the crypto industry always learn something new from newbies. And newbies always bring like different flavors of like the current month and the generation. And your already existing interests like art or culture or gaming or sports into Web 3.0. So um, I'm currently in the works of doing a crypto creator house and organizing that right now. And I have another project um, trying to get together crypto TikTokers and that's what I currently can publicly share about what I'm doing in crypto. And yeah, let me know if you have any more questions. Please, please, please comment because I'm just talking so much. Bye.